Hello there, name's Chris, and uh, I'm about to give you a little uh, shot of eye racing using the Oculus Rift. Uh, eye racing is currently the only, I'd say the overall only simulator that's like not in development that officially supports the Oculus Rift. Uh, I've been hoping to try airplane simulators eventually. Uh, War Thunder could count as an airplane simulator, but not really, it's more of a game. And uh, War Thunder's implementation is so horrible that I'm not even gonna count it as... You know, I haven't tried it in a few months, but I'm sure it's still a field of view of like 65 degrees stretched out to 110 degrees. It's really, really sickening. And uh, so far, iRacing is the only simulator that's got the full implementation. It's a native implementation, so you don't have to run like six apps to get it going. And uh, it runs really well. Uh, the way you know it's running really well, I'm super sensitive to motion sickness in first-person shooters with the Oculus Rift. And I can do hours upon hours upon hours of driving simulation uh, with the Oculus Rift goes to show you that their implementation is actually pretty good. So let's try this out. Got my rift all lined up here. Looks like I didn't experience any drift. I do have a, a button to... Re there you go. I, I hit the recenter button and barely noticed the difference. Um, adjust the strap here. Make myself comfortable. And uh, I'm going to be driving this car around Watkins Glen International in the uh, boot configuration. It's got that extra part that they close off for NASCAR. I'm using an Indy car right here. Um, and uh, this is a track I actually know a lot because I used to actually go camp there to watch the NASCAR race. In fact, I would sit right ahead where I'm looking there. You have a grandstand over there. It's called the 90 because of the 90 degree turn down the hill. And that is where I would sit and I would camp not far from there back uh, not, not far from the parking lots and uh, went there several times and the first thing I recognize when I put the rift on and look around obviously I've noticed this on the monitor but it, it's even more real in the rift despite the low resolution is those green barriers those those aqua green barriers I remember those very well I partied like an animal over there uh, the NASCAR weekend in Watkins Glen is uh, somewhat of a uh, it's a Woodstock of automobile racing and it happens every year. It is completely insane. If you've never gone, I recommend this. But right now the point is to try this car out on this track. Funny thing is, as much as I know Watkins Glen, the track, I didn't ever know that much until I actually uh, picked up the simulator and did a few laps on it. Uh, now it's a bit brutal to try out a new racing track in the Oculus Rift due to the low resolution. Uh, why? Because when you zoom into a portion, you're down to 7 or 8 pixels. And they're going to tell me, Chris, what the fuck are you talking about? The brain does not zoom. Or the eyes do not zoom. Well, your eyes can focus on something, and the brain does sort of simulate a zoom. It doesn't really zoom in on something, but it, focus, it focuses its attention on a small portion of your vision. And when this happens in racing, when you're specifically looking out far to see the next turn, um, you'll tend to be focusing down on uh, like seven or eight pixels of information and really things will come out at you a bit too late for you to react. So it's a good thing to start slow if you're on a new track. If you're on a track that you know by heart, for instance, if I loaded Montreal in this simulator and I went ahead, I would do a pretty good job of it because I've I've driven in a lot of sims. I've actually been on the track itself once with my old Dodge Shadow. Long story, but uh, but the, the 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 fun thing is if if you know the track, then you can pretty much manage. I mean, it's it's all about knowing the track. Racing is all about knowing the track in the first place. Even in real life, you can't just go flat out on a track you don't know. Um, and, uh, and, and that's it, but uh, I actually used the Oculus Rift to learn this track. Now, I already had a general idea from having walked around it a few times and walked on it a few times, but it was not a track I'd particularly tried in simulators, so this was new to me, and I learned it in the simulator using the Oculus Rift. So here I go. I'm gonna shut up now. Oh, shut up. Try actually to keep talking while I'm driving. Describe what I'm experiencing. This track, I actually, you know, when I started learning, well, my favorite track to drive in a simulator before this one was 
far. Well, there's a lot of flat out portions, a lot of speed going on in that track. Take care of the inner loop here. Get to turn 10. And I'm going in loop. Completely forgot what I was talking about a second ago. I just got possessed right now. Yeah, Spa, Belgium. Uh, there's a lot of flat out portions. It's a fucking crazy track. Except, I think Watkins Glen takes it. Uh, in my opinion, Watkins Glen is uh, with the boot open now. I'm not talking about the NASCAR version. I don't like the NASCAR version because it's too simple. This whole portion here, plus the rest of the track, eh, sort of wins the contest even against uh, Belgium, which is a track I really, really like. I mean, it's when you're starting to do good laps, you know because you're starting to scare yourself, even in the sim. But, I really like Watkins Glen, so it's, it's, it's a tough contest, actually. I, I don't know which one I could say I directly prefer, but I really have uh, a, 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 a new thing going with Watkins Glen, really. I, I didn't expect it to be that brutal of a track. This thing must be, with the boot open, hard on both the tires and the brakes. I mean, look at the speeds I'm hitting here in these, these, these straightaways. On, on that uphill part where you're literally forcing the car to take the turns. In this part over here, you have to slow down and you do have to skid it through a little bit. Force the car to take the turns. Same thing here. It's how your tires are going. And then with braking like that, your brakes are going. So when, as soon as you're in the boot, it's a little less tire, a little more brake. I love that part with the two fences there, two guardrails. And then again, here it's the brakes much more than the tires. And here's the part where I think it would cause NASCAR a problem, and that's why they close off the boot. This turn is uphill and tight, and could possibly cause NASCAR cars to have a high probability of stalling, even with the best drivers operating them. So they had to close off the park. Although I think it's a bummer, because uh, the boot is one heck of a piece of racetrack. I'm probably not clocking any spectacular times here, but I am enjoying myself a whole lot. just started pushing a little bit. I can feel a few missing frames because of fraps right now. It's not messing me up. I can just feel them. Your eyes get really, really sensitive to that kind of stuff in the Oculus Rift.
Alright, that's enough. I... I guess I did my best lap this session, or, or I didn't even... Oh, this is hot. This I love this. See how the sun's reflecting in the steering wheel here? I literally have the impression the sun's hitting my head right now. It's almost as if my brain wants those areas of my body that are lit to be warm. And, and, and it, you, you know when you feel the sun hitting the side of your head? But this is exactly... And as it's moving about my body, this, this is one of the most immersive things. This, this is what I like about iRacing. The graphics engine is really good. And it's not slowed down by the stereoscopic Oculus Rift, which is asking it to render everything twice for the two eyes of uh, perspective. And, wow, uh, the, the, the sunlight is, is just that extra little detail. The fact that you got the occlusion there going right, and the reflections and everything, it's, it's just incredible. There's a little bug right here, I can look through my car. I thought it's because I had configured my uh, utility to um, to use the B lenses in the Oculus Rift, which I'm using right now. And I actually changed the configurator to A before starting the sim, and that did not make this problem go away. So I guess that wasn't there before. I guess uh, iRacing in one of their updates messed something up. I guess it can be fixed. Anyway, so uh, I guess... Uh, I guess I'm gonna head to pits now, and this is one thing I really like about uh, simulators is if you want to go to the pits, you don't have to go to the pits. You just do this. Ta da! You're in the pits. And I'm gonna get out of the car, check this out. There you go. I'm out of the car. So, uh, that's it. I guess that does a pretty good demonstration. Oh shit, that is not good for the brain. When the camera pans like that, and oddly enough, this is so weird. This is one graphics engine I can stomach when it does it. It really doesn't feel as bad as um, it really doesn't feel as bad as uh, when I'm in a first-person shooter getting my head turned. I mean, this is changing views on me, and I'm still feeling pretty decent. I mean, there's no uh, there's actually zero discomfort, right? Now. I'm I'm surprised. When the camera panned earlier, though, I was turning my head at the same time. That felt weird, but this I mean, this this is pretty neat. I guess it's really, really all about the graphics engine implementation. Uh, so far, personal experience, anything that runs off Unity runs really well on the Oculus Rift. Uh, stuff that's made on UDK, eh, not so good. Uh, will tend to give massive motion sickness. Same thing for OpenGL. Uh, if you're not used to it, I've seen, I'm not talking for everybody, uh, people who are really, really resistant to VR can uh, stomach incredible things. And I've seen a lot of people able to take a lot of stuff. This is not just like an exceptional, out of the norm kind of thing. A lot of people can endure it, but some of us have issues with first person shooters and here and there and might not even be the mechanics. It might just be the graphics engine in some cases. Uh, who knows? We'll have to do more research. I'm gonna have to try more stuff. People are gonna have to try more stuff. In fact, I've entered a bit of development myself. I'm enjoying myself. This is a great era for virtual reality and I'm going to shut up now and end this video. Thanks for watching.